Hi, friends. Uh, I'm one of your hosts of Strive for Drive, Kent, along with my co-host. Rex. <laughs> and we, we are tickled pink today. We have Mr. Perry, basis for Striper, and his wonderful wife, Miss Shelley Richardson. Welcome, you all. Warm welcome. Thank you for having Thanks, us. Man. Good to be here. <laughs> and uh, it's going to take me just a minute. <laughs> I told Mr. Perry and Miss Shelley, I, I feel like a kid on Christmas Day, uh, and they're like Mr. and Mrs. Claus to us right now, so I'm, I'm having to get over myself a little bit. <laughs> so warmest of welcomes to you both, and it certainly is an honor and a privilege to have you here, and uh, we have an array of questions, and I know your time is valuable, so if you don't mind, we'll just delve right into the nitty gritty. All right. Um, and Rex, uh, let's be the gentleman that we aspire to be. Mr. Perry, we hope you'll appreciate this. Miss Shelley, if you don't mind, we'd like to abide by the lady's first principle. Oh, and sure. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll put you under the spotlight first, if that's okay with you. Of course. Okay. So just have some, well, an array of questions here. Now, Miss Shelley, Rex and I, we like to do our homework here on Striper Drive, and we're diehard fans, as, as diehard Striper fans, as you all, I'm sure, know firsthand what that's about. Um, yeah. Another way to say diehard fans is, is Striper nerds. So we're I like it. we're interested in, in, in all of it. And Miss Shelley and, and Rex and I just doing our homework. Um, we've we've realized that uh, you had been with. Uh, Keep the Faith Radio and RLM, Mission Management. Does that sound about right? Yeah. And um, you were with RLM Mission Management. You were an associate manager and director of communications there in Nashville. And I'm not sure what RLM stands for, but with radio communications or director of communications, what all did that entail for you? Well, it's, it stands for Randy Love Lady Management and Mission Management. When um, I first moved to Nashville, um, which is, um, I moved there to be with Perry and to, to work in management. And because uh, I come from a country radio background in DC. And um, uh, basically, uh, associate manager, we had artists when I joined Little Big Town, Daryl Worley, Danny Gokey. Um, so I did, you know, I did all like their day to day stuff and then um uh we got into towards the end of when i was working there we got into um uh, festivals uh the, the pepsi gulf coast jam and so that's where that kind of director of communications came from so associate manager kind of just day-to-day -day everything um for the artists like setting up phoners and travel and um doing basically any any of their needs um and um, and then director of communications, just every I did contracts for the festivals and and worked in that area as well. So you were busy, busy. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was really busy. When you work in artist management, it is really busy. It's it's not a like nine to five job. It's like twenty four seven. You know, sure. Just, yeah. <laughs> I, and then and so then that was in two thousand six, and then in twenty fourteen. You worked with Keep the Faith Radio in Nashville as the digital content manager. What all did that entail, if you don't mind my asking? Sure, absolutely. Um, it's uh, I was work, I was hired to work on their app. Um, so basically, it's a syndicated uh, radio network on hundreds of radio stations, Christian radio stations across the country, and um, they had this app that they started. And basically, um, all the things that were airing on. The program I would tag and put into to this app so that that's what they were creating so people eventually when they could download it they could you know listen to stories and and people sharing you know things about their faith and and stories about their lives and helping to inspire people it was kind of just more of like positive it, it, you know it's just a good you can listen to keep the faith radio now but um, it's just all about just positive uh, stories and just inspiring others. So it was just really cool. So I did that and then I did a lot of their, um, I just kind of did a lot of other things in the office and um, we had a lot of interviews that came in. So helped with the recording process and all that. It was actually out of um, uh, my boss's house. So we worked out of his house. So it was pretty cool. And he had his own studio and stuff. So it was really cool. I liked it a lot. Cool. Very cool. So um, you mentioned, Miss Shelley, that you 
you were you started with <clears throat> RLM, the radio there, and that was after you had met Perry in 2004. Is that right? Yeah. So um, I worked in um, at a country radio station um, in Washington D.C. for almost uh, nine nine years, and I went to a radio. It's called Country Radio Seminar. And in 2004, and one of my record reps who worked for Lyric Street uh, Records at the time, which had Rascal Flatts, he knew Perry, and he had told me about Perry. And um, I went there for the convention, and he was there. His name was Chris Palmer, and um, he was there, and he said, hey, Shelly, come here. I want you to meet this guy that I've been talking about for ever. And he knew that I loved Firehouse and a hair band fan and rock fan for a long time. And so he introduced us um, in 04. And it was, we kind of been together ever since. And then a year after that is when I decided to move to Nashville. So we decided cool. to move in together. And that's why I was, uh, which I was, we were genuinely interested in what all your, your uh, job description titles entailed. But we were also kind of uh, wondering if that's how you and Mr. Perry met was through, uh, maybe if it, if, if it was through radio somehow and you doing what you did and, you know, and, and meeting up with Perry through that type of a situation. So. Yeah, it was pretty cool. And he was playing and he was working with Craig Morgan at the time. And I knew Craig Morgan, of course, from being country music. So it was kind of, it was kind of a crazy way we met, but yeah. <laughs> I did have a question about, um, well, one of them was, you know, if, if Perry was playing country at the time, which, which I could tell by the timeline he was, and I, we, I didn't know if you knew that he had been in Firehouse already, and um, <clears throat> so you were a fan of Firehouse before, before meeting Perry. Well, see, we're 18 years apart. <laughs> So the answer when I say that, but when I was a, when I was thirteen, that was the first CD I bought. Was Firehouse? I mean, I was always I loved all hair bands, all rock music, hard rock, heavy metal. I loved it all. But yeah, so I had already been a fan, um, and that's when my friend Chris he knew that, and, and so when he introduced us, I was you know, I mean. <laughs> Obviously, it had been a long time since um, since that era, but um, I uh, kind of just fell in love with him at first sight, anyway. So, sure. Well, it's a timeless era, though. I mean, that's some, in my humble opinion, uh, which what do I know? I'm, I mean, I'm just a fan, of, of course, of, of that music. But you know, the '80s and we um, people could argue, but '60s, '70s, and '80s timeless music um you know in in the very early 90s too um when grunge hit i didn't understand it at first but that's a completely different story but some timeless bands that are still kicking it from 60s 70s and 80s and early 90s uh, great music um yeah. so miss shelly then with you know as a couple you've both been in the the country and rock and roll realm do you have a preference, Miss Shelley, uh, among the genres, or is it a bit like Donnie and Marie, where I'm a little bit country, I'm a little bit rock and roll? I mean, yeah, I think I think it's kind of both. I mean, country music was, I mean, I was a rock fan first, but country music was such a huge part of my career and my life that that's always got a special place in my heart. But I'm a rock girl through and through. So, but you know. <laughs> and that's how I met Perry, so I'm always forever grateful. Sure. So. Wonderful. joined Striper on October the 30th, 
of 2017. And, and right now, Rex and I just wish a little early, but we wish you both a very happy three-year strike anniversary. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> It's so great to have you both on board, and we're grateful, and we'll get into the superbness of this last album here down the road, but uh, just great to have you all, and so Miss Shelley, our, our next question is that you became, in 2018, you became the advancing slash tour manager at Michael Sweet, advancing slash tour manager at Striper, and travel specialist at Striper. Um, as I mentioned, Rex and I are Striper nerds, diehard Striper fans. And again, just like previously, would you mind sharing what those job titles entail? And I'm asking that not to be nosy, but you know, sometimes us Striper fans, we just see Perry and company up on stage, rocking it, doing their thing so wonderfully. And we tend to forget what all the, the work that goes behind setting things up and the travel and everything. So, Miss Shelley, if you don't mind, your your uh, your job descriptions there. What all are, what all goes on behind the scenes for Striper with that? So basically, I started off as a travel specialist, and I booked all their travel. So that's you know their flights, hotel, car service, anything like that. Um, and it's not just booking it; it's researching to make sure. You know, it's a good location, it's not sketchy, and that you could park a tour bus, and um, it's all like really intricate details, and also getting early check-ins, and making sure, you know, once the band arrives, because sometimes they arrive at 7 a.m., and you have to call the hotel and stalk them and say, hey, the room's ready yet, um, and hopefully they won't charge you <laughs> to get in early, but um, so that's kind of what I started off doing, and then um, I started doing uh, basically tour managing from home. So I still do all the travel stuff. And then um, once we get a show booked, I go ahead and call the promoter, uh, the venue, and basically go through, we pitch a schedule to them. Hey, we've got the band arriving at um, 12 noon. Let's go ahead and do load in um, about two hours uh, or, and then, you know, sound check for two hours. And okay, let's have lunch for the guys when they get there. What are you guys serving? And then we, I kind of go through the, um, our, our tour rider, which includes, you know, the foods that they like and the drinks and what, you know, what, what they prefer. Um, you know, we have some people with allergies and some people that prefer certain types of foods. So kind of go over the entire schedule with them. And then we go over the meet and greets and how that's going to work um, and what time everyone lines up and, um, how we go through that whole process um, and, uh, you know, we go over, you know, money and, and merch. So we just, I just kind of go through with the venue, the entire setup. I don't do production. Uh, Randy Scott does that. He's also the drum tech, um, but he takes care of all the production because I'm not really a production kind of gal. So um, <laughs> I usually have to ask him a bunch of questions. But um, but yeah, so I go through all that with them and um, I put together a day sheet, which a day sheet is, it's for the guys and it gets posted on the bus. Um, if they fly, it gets posted in the dressing room. Um, and then I email it to them and it basically says what's going on at different times of the day so they know okay, well, we have load in here, sound check here, we're gonna eat here, the meet and greets at this time, the show starts here, here are the opening acts, here's the capacity of the, you know, how many people we're expecting and what the capacity is for the venue, contacts at the bottom. So I kind of put all of the, you know, after going through everything with the venue, I kind of just put it all together in a sheet for them. And that goes in the dressing room and the tour bus. And then we also use an app called Master Tour, and that has the schedule as well. So that includes all the travel, the hotel information, and all that. So I kind of put, after going through all that, I just kind of put everything together in, in one. So um, it keeps me really busy um, when the guys are touring, um, but um, it's it's a lot of fun, and and I, I that's the, my favorite. You know, I've always loved artist management and doing anything like that. I mean, I've loved radio, but this was like, this has always been my thing. So I really enjoy it. So that's kind of just a description of what I do there. So. so you're really the point person then when it comes to the touring part of it, Shelly. You really, uh, 
you handle all of that so the guys don't have to then and and you're in charge then if i understand that right <laughs> yeah okay yeah i'm sorry yeah. that's right um, yeah Just super organized <laughs> yeah yeah awesome awesome yeah and then what about um, when, when the guys aren't touring? Because, um, you know, I know you work in their office and that. What, what kind of things do you do when they're not touring? So basically, um, we, anything that we're doing as far as like meet and greets, I do all that setup. So whether, you know, before COVID, when we were doing normal meet and greets, I set all that stuff up in something in what we use called eTix. Um, and that was when we were on the road. Um, but now doing the Zoom um, interviews and all that sort of interviews and um, the fan meet and greets, I set up all that online um, and take care of all that. Um, you know, booking travel always happens outside of that time. Um, I do I just any kind of uh, anything to do with uh, like passports and uh, global entry and uh, I do anything that Lisa Sweet, their manager, one of their co-managers needs in the office and just kind of uh, a, a liaison for them and um, answer all of the business emails um, that uh, that come through on that account from fans or, um, or whatnot. Um, I set up phoners. I just kind of anything that needs to be done um, I kind of do. I do. I work on budgets as well. So just anything basically that needs to be done that Lisa needs help with, I'm kind of just there to help her too, especially during this time. So cool. It's. I appreciate you sharing that, Miss Shelley. You know, it's always an eye-opening experience. As I mentioned, sometimes people just think the band gets up there and plays, and it's all fun and games. But yeah. there is a lot of work that goes into it all to make that happen. So. Thank you for making that happening. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, so we can see our favorite band. <laughs> so I know the answer to this question, Ms. Shelley, because you've already alluded to it, but uh, did you, were you a Striker fan before, uh, you know, back in the day in the 80s? Did you know of Striker? I did know of Striker, and I liked a couple of their songs. And, I mean, that, just being honest, I, I liked their music. I wasn't a, a huge fan until I got reintroduced when Perry started mm -hmm. and he played the Fallen record for me and I was just <laughs> like blown away. Yeah. Um, you know, as I did like some of the, sh you know, I loved Free, you know, just a lot of the older stuff, but not as big of a fan as I am now. And I mean, it was even before Perry started. I mean, it, just listening to Fallen, I was just like, this is a striper I love before he even got the job like you know it just it just blew me away musically and, and lyrically and um so then i became an even bigger fan when he joined so just to be honest <laughs> so then no and i appreciate your honesty now now when perry did join um you know what was your if you don't mind my asking your your emotions you know was it like wow this is Totally awesome. I mean, what were your thoughts when all that, when Perry joined and it all happened? possibility we were just looking at each other like oh my gosh this is his opportunity to be back in rock music is what he he thrives in you know mm -hmm. um and i just was excited for the possibility of that even just happening and then um when he went for the interview when he flew to boston and met the guys and it was just such a positive experience and he really just just everything it, it, it felt good to him and it felt great you know and just hearing how happy he was the potential of being with Striper made me happy um and then 
when we were waiting to hear, I was like, oh my gosh, I want this so bad for you. Um, and uh, when it happened, he was golfing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think you were on the road with Craig Morgan, right? And he was golfing and he called me and he's like, oh my gosh, I just got a call. I, I'm, I just, I, I got the job with Striper and I just screamed. I was so loud. I was so happy. Just, just so happy because it's just, I knew it would make him so happy. Right. And so that just made me even happier. I'm just so proud of him. So I was just ecstatic and just for him to be back in the rock world. It just, I was so happy and, you know, just that I, I couldn't, I, it was like smiling for weeks and weeks and weeks. It was exciting. So it's awesome. Yeah. So we are right on the eve of Perry's three year anniversary. Well, both of your all's three year anniversary with Striper which is awesome. Um, before we turn the spotlight on to Mr. Perry there, uh, you know, has among us striper nerds and, and diehard fans and whatnot, um, there's this thing called striperia that we have. It's, it's all of us who are affected by striper and the music. Um, Miss Shelley, what, what is your overall impression of the whole shebang with all of the fandom and or are there any particular wonderful moments that just especially stick out since you, you all have been with Stripe? Um, the first thing that I noticed which shocked me was the fan reaction and how welcoming they were not only to him, which is what I would hope would happen, um, but just to me, I mean, I had so many people reach out to me and friend me on Facebook and, and chatting with me and interested in about me. And I was like, I'm not in the band. Like I, that is something I, I never expected. I never expected to be friends with anybody. Like I just didn't because, you know, I just feel like that's just, it's about him, you know, and just how they've just been so kind. And I, I, I've never seen fans like this, you know, they care about you. They, you know, they, they message you. They, they, they just, it, they're, it's just so cool. I, I love that part of it. And I think you guys are just so amazing and the way you promote the band and the way you care for the band and just that surprised me the most. And I just was overwhelmed with that. Um, just coming up on three years, like I just, I've just fallen in love with getting, you know, him, seeing him on stage and seeing how happy he is and working with the guys. I mean, everyone in the Striper camp is just amazing. Just the band, the management team, everyone that does the website, social media, the publicity, everything like that. Everything, everybody works really well together. And it's just, it's such a, it's, it's such a great team to work with. And it makes me, I mean, I work from home and it's just exciting to do that and be able to be a part of that and work from home and um, just be a part of like this, the whole striper world. I just, I absolutely just love it. Love the success the guys have had, um, love the music and just, I'm just so happy. That, I can't believe it's been three years, but it's, uh, it's been a great journey so far and hopefully many, many more years. Yeah. So you um, you guys probably did have a little bit of trepidation about how Perry would be accepted in the band and probably weren't expecting what you got with everyone just pretty much welcoming you guys with open arms and just loving you guys. Yeah, that was completely we, – we didn't know because, I mean, I know what an amazing man he is and what a great musician he is. Um, but you just don't know. I mean, when you replace somebody in a band, you just don't know how people are going to react. And they have just been so kind. You, you guys, you were, you guys are the fans, you know, you guys have been so kind and welcoming and, um, it just, I, I couldn't be happier. <laughs> so. Do you all know, uh, our friend Brett Christensen, do y'all know Brett? We love Brett. Yeah. And Brett's been so kind to us. Yes. And, um, very gracious to us. And, you know, Brett, uh, we did a, uh, he was wonderful to, to allow us to interview him. And, you know, he mentioned to us, you know, Striper is, is like a family. And I, I understand that. I mean, we're, we're just fans. We're on the fan side of things, but I can see that where, you know, Striper is like a, 
a warm family. And so uh, we're, we're just thankful for you all <laughs> being a part of that family. And things are only getting better. My goodness, Perry, I mean, this album that you all just released, there are so many people, and we've had some discussions, Rex and I have, we, we always pre-record our episodes, of course, for, for, for different reasons, um, to work mostly around our work schedule, but, you know, there are many who contend where as to hell with the devil was the, the old striper benchmark, um, and to some it still may be or is, but even the devil believes is right up there. We are super... Are, are you pleased, Mr. Perry? Are, are you pleased with that album? I'm, uh, I'm as proud of this as anything I've ever done in my life. I mean, it's... It was a great collaboration. I mean, we had a great time recording it, and it was something just magical happened there because we hadn't been together. I hadn't been with him that long, you know, never recorded with him before. And uh, I don't know, it just kind of just happened, you know. It was so good, and and uh, I was, you know, you're always scared at first. You going in, we hadn't. I mean, I, yeah, it helped a lot that I'd played with him live for you know, year and a half or two years or whatever it had been, but uh, that's still not the same as going in and locking. Everything's got to be perfect in the studio, you know. And you get, you know, I was a little scared going into there, but it was just so relaxed and we had such a good time doing it. It, it was a, a great experience. And I just can't believe I've already turned out. Yeah. Well, I noticed on some of the songs, Perry, the bass is... Um... Uh, fairly prominent. Uh, how much did you contribute to that? I know Michael wrote the songs, but I'm sure everyone has input. Um, how much input did you have on any of the songs with doing like specific bass type things or or whatnot with the album? Well, as, as far as mixing goes, I, I had no input at all. That was Michael and Engineer and all. They, came, they ended up having to remotely mix this thing mm -hmm. too because they couldn't go up there which is amazing. They'll be sending files back and forth and listening on headphones, and it's just not the same as being in a control room with studio monitors and near-field things and getting all these different speakers you can use to get the mix right. So did an amazing job. I can't believe, I mean, I couldn't, I can't think of anything that's, that I would change on it. I mean, the bass, some people think the bass is a little bit louder than normal but i think it drives that low end drives it, the record a little bit more and it gives it a lot of a and the bass tone we got so good it's like it fits perfect and with their guitar tones and stuff and and the drums and you're not noticing it you don't think it's too loud but you start listening to the bass specifically and you, it really comes through you're like wow i heard the bass out well on a record in a long time, you know, and which I had no input on that. That was all them, man. It was like, turn it up, more bass to play for me. <laughs> you know, uh, it's, you know you, I mean, the first Firehouse record, we, I, I was there, um, we were involved in mixing all that stuff, and I was fighting and fighting and fighting to get the bass turned up, and, you know, every day, but didn't have to do that on this, and it's it turned out amazing. I love the uh, the low end rumble, kind of the little intro into "Make Love Great Again." You can kind of hear that bass growling, and that's pretty cool because you know something's fixing to hit you. And <laughs> yeah. what a great song that was! And I love that song. Yeah, that's what. So, I Perry, if you don't mind my asking, um, as I understand it, "Make Love Great Again" and "Do Unto Others." You essentially um, do unto others. You put the title out there, and then make love great again. You had initially presented the title as "Make Rock Great Again." Did you actually? Were you working on a theme, like a song theme, or with those titles, or uh, meaning, were you actually kind of crafting a song in your head under those titles, or 
Was it more of a spontaneous uh, title contributions? It was just a spontaneous title thing, man. Um, he, Michael uh, texted everybody. It's like, man, y'all got to help me come up with some tie, song titles. We've got to start writing around, you know. And uh, the first thing that popped, popped in my head, you know, was like, it, and it's not at all political. You know, it's not a pro-Trump song or an anti-Trump song. It has nothing to do with that. That's just in everybody's head right now. And I wanted to make a play on that. So it's identifiable and that kind of thing. But it's not, it's not political at all. And uh, doing the others just kind of came to me. It was like if those two came to me within 10 minutes of him texting me and I texted them back to him and we ended up using that. So. So it's it's amazing, and of course Michael is just such a a wonderful songwriter, and his abilities to to work like he does so quickly and to come up with something. But it's just neat, Perry, that had it not have been for those titles in your head, I mean that was the spark that lit the fire there. So yeah, that's he, awesome, man. <laughs> I know I can't believe he is. The, I've never seen a man write as much as him so quickly it's like he can write a record in two weeks i'm like it would take most bands months to come up with, with what he comes up with i mean just so fast you know and has that vision in his, his head of how this thing should be and he'll send us a, a you know a, a drum track and a guitar and that's all there is there and that's all i got to hear it's, we didn't have any vocals or any melody, or anything. All we heard before we got up there to start recording this stuff was just a rhythm track. And uh, so you have no idea what it's going to be like. I mean, you're like, you know, without hearing the melody of a song, your mind's going and it's like, what should I be playing here? Because I play off the vocal a lot and, you know, what's going on in the song. And, so we really didn't, I mean, I've got to listen to it and kind of feel where everything was going, but it wasn't until we got all got together and started work, working the songs out and uh, rewriting everything and the, and the production of that, that it started coming around and we were like, <laughs> about a week into it, we're like, wow, this is, this is, this is yes. it's, it's great. Now, so Barry, when y'all went to see, see Danny Bernini there at Spirit House um, with your, with your, uh, cause you were mentioning you just had Michael's rhythm tracks and y'all got together and how many days or how long did it take for you to get your, uh, get your bass tracks recorded? Was it a single day or a couple days or? I think it was two days. I think, yeah, I think it was two days we finished everything up. Okay. Um, because we've been, we, First went to Michael's house and we all did pre-production there. So we worked out everything before we got to the studio. Because you can't afford to pay. You don't, you know, we're not Def Leppard. We spend a year <laughs> on an album in the studio. So we got everything like we wanted it at his house. We spent, you know, two or three weeks there working on everything, working all the parts and trying to get vocals and all that stuff situated. And so when we got there, we knew what we were doing and it kind of, you know, there was little things we had. I mean, a lot of the bass stuff was come up with right there on the spot. And uh, ideas would come from Michael and everybody, Oz and Robert, and try this, let's do this here and there. And it, everybody did that for everybody's parts. And that's what made it so cool, I think. You know, everybody's got everybody's input on their instruments. and But it, it basically, we knew what we were doing when we got there. So it went pretty quick. And what about your backing vocals? Uh, how, how much time and, and did y'all do a lot of stacking and what all was entailed with your uh, backing yeah, vocals? Yeah, there's a lot of stacking going on. So we got, um, all of us would get in there and sing at one time, right? Two microphones and we, everybody would sing the same part. So we would do that one part, do the next part, do the next part, do the next part. So everybody's singing one part the whole time on well, most of I mean sometimes some things we would split up and do a few different parts at once but yeah there's got to be 
I don't know, man. If you were to hear those vocals by themselves and the track, there's probably no telling, 50 or 60 vocals or more going on on every every one of those. But uh, it's uh, that took a that took a little while. There was a lot of a lot of work going on on the vocals on this thing. That took longer than the bass. <laughs> so, yeah. So I was going to ask you, Mr. Perry, on uh, on the divider video, and I'm so ready for COVID-19 to, to be over with. I think we all are, but yeah, let's talk about that killer kilt. The kilt? <laughs> so that is so awesome, man. Uh, what, what, <laughs> will that be making, when COVID is over, will that killer kilt be making a live appearance in concert? <laughs> we could take that. We might should take a vote on that. Though, yeah, we? that is uh, awesome. It, but, uh, was that we, fan made or tailor made or Miss Shelley? Did you craft that or where'd you pick that? Oh up? yeah, I'm not skilled like that. He <laughs> has a sewing machine, but I started. I, yeah, I bought a sewing machine a few months ago. And started trying to learn how to sew. So I've been trapped at home. It's like that might be fun. That's. <laughs> It's almost as hard as golf. So I don't he gets know. really mad if he screws up. I mean, it's like he doesn't get mad very often, but he's like, "Do a comment." But uh, uh, Lisa, uh, she texted us from a kilt store because uh, her and Michael bought that for him. She's like, "Oh, she yeah, just texted a like picture." I said something about wanting a kilt to her one day. Yeah, a long time ago. It's like. <laughs> We're at a kilt store. I'm gonna buy you this kilt if you promise to wear it on stage. I was like, "Yeah, I'll wear it." And sure enough, she bought. She bought it. So like, you got to bring this and do a photo with it. So I brought it, and just in the midst of all the photo shoots we were doing, I wore it this particular day, and that just so happened that day of that photo shoot in that time frame. We had to wear in the video what we were wearing at that moment in that photo shoot to make it correlate with what was going on and all this stuff. So it happens to be the kilt picture, right? So I had to wear, I had to wear the kilt in the video. So it was, uh, was like, it's killer. Well, they're ready for this, man. I don't know about it. <laughs> it's totally awesome. And I wonder if maybe that was pre-planned. Maybe. Okay, he's in the uh, kilt. Okay, guys, we yeah. got to do this video. <laughs> uh, it wasn't pre-planned. It just kind of happened. And, uh, <laughs> uh, was, uh, oh man, I'm, you know, so hard to pull that off. Well, you did it, buddy. It's awesome. I think there's been a lot of great fan response, and it takes a big man to do that. You're the man, Perry. Well, and I'm Irish and Scottish, so I, you know, <laughs> I, I can pull it off. Sure, <laughs> it's in your blood. <laughs> so. <laughs> Well, even the devil believes, there's no doubt about it. Uh, just rave reviews. It's awesome. Uh, our hats off to you guys. Uh, just terrific. Uh, we, we're blessed. And um, so, Mr. Perry, I know you all have been busy. Not only that, but the, uh, the forthcoming Striper acoustic album uh, that we've heard mention of, that is still on the table. Is it right? Is that right? Yep, yep. Uh, I finished, uh, I redid all the bass tracks and the vocals on that while I, we were up there doing uh, this album. So <clears throat> I took a day to just knock that out. We did every, all the vocals and the bass in one day. And uh, I haven't heard it yet. So, uh, you know, uh, it sounded great before. So, uh, you know, I think it'll, I think it's going to turn out really good. It, it'll be something different. Um, I'm excited. We I'm did sorry. an acoustic album. I'm sorry. We did an acoustic album with Firehouse and yep. uh, Good Acoustics, 1996. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That that was a uh, 
that was a fun record to do, do a little different versions and stuff. And, um, I, I, you know, and it's got some of the stuff that turned into like a country vibe on that even. So mm -hmm. it was kind of my background showing through back then. <laughs> That's my favorite Firehouse album, actually. Really? I love what you all did with that. Um, some great song. Probably You Are My Religion. I love the, the melody to that song. Uh, it just kind of rollicks along, and it's great little tune, you know. Y'all yeah. uh, did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. That was fun. So, Perry, I'm assuming probably sometime next year we'll see the acoustic album, or are you knowing when that might be released? Or I don't think we know yet. I haven't heard of yeah. the time release on, on the release of that yet. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah, it's going to probably be at least, I would think it would be at least nine months okay. before, before we see that. But so, I could, oh, don't hold me to that. <laughs> <laughs> regarding i know that you said perry that you haven't heard it yet or ever uh after you lay down your tracks but as you were laying down your tracks um what are your impressions of it overall meaning the the, the striper songs have they been slowed down a bit and mellowed some or is it heavy on the ballads or is it keeping things up tempo like like good acoustics from Firehouse, but it, it's just modified acoustically. Yeah, it's kind of the same kind of thing. We didn't just, everything had to slow down or all, and that kind of thing, but there's a couple of, I mean, you've got to get a different feel. A lot of times the rhythm tracks that we did bass will be different just to kind of fit with the whatever, you know, when you've got a, mostly acoustic guitars going, it's not the same as <laughs> right, right. Uh, strumming more or whatever. So you want to play along with that a little bit, but they wouldn't change that much. So the the acoustics they play. I mean, the, the way they played it, they kept it uh, close to the as, as you can get. You know, to a heavy song being turned into an acoustic thing like that. But yeah, I don't remember anything being greatly different. On it's just kind of a different take on the songs. Did you use an acoustic bass for any of it? No, no, I, I, no, I used the same bass. Uh, we, I mean, even the acoustic basses that I've had, they're still electric. This is like, you know, it ain't like you're using an upright. I, I, can't, I can't play that. I'm trying. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I wouldn't want to try that, but sure. you know they're all the same thing. You just the solid body bass is going to just sound better. Mm -hmm. We tweaked it so it sounds a little different, you know. And but you know, basically the drums and bass are going to sound, you know, pretty much the same anyway. Well, I'm actually very excited to hear. It's neat when you have some great songs and you add a different flavor, such as we're talking about here with you. Striper acoustic offerings. I mean, I'm, you know, a Firehouse fan. Uh, Good Acoustics was actually my favorite album. And, uh, you know, having been a Kiss fan, too, um, I love their MTV Unplugged. I think it's really neat what they did, and it kind of brings a, well, just, I don't want to say a new life, but a different flavor, and it's very enjoyable. Uh, yeah. So I'm yeah. excited. It can make you concentrate on different aspects of songs, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't have that guitar, just blasting your face <laughs> off. You're listening to some other things that you normally might not hear. And it, uh, it kind of gives it a new, a whole new vibe. So on, on that note, I mean, Striper's busy, 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 and of course, we're all excited. I don't know how else to describe this, but um, 
for lack of a better term, this live in the studio series and recordings we're hearing, such as you all have, uh, as I understand it, uh, you all will be doing a, if you haven't already, the live in the studio recordings for Even the Devil Believes and To Hell with the Devil. Yeah. Um, have you all already done that, Perry? It's done. It is done. We did that. Uh, when did we do that? In August, when you did the video. Yeah, when we recorded the videos. Both videos, we yeah. We went in and had to knock those out. And what, uh, they're all live, you? man. It's, it's, we're, we set up a few cameras in the stu same studio and just played through the songs as best we could because. They're new. They were new to us too, you know. I mean, we hadn't been on the road playing these songs for a year, so we're still learning them. I mean, even playing in the studio is totally different. You do one little piece at a time, and you don't. It doesn't get ingrained in your mind as a song until later. Um, and we didn't have time to really sit down and and learn those songs that well. So it's fresh to us. <laughs> it's weird. You, you'll probably see when this comes out, we're not like going crazy because we're kind of thinking about what we're doing. It's like, man, what's, what's next? And doing that and trying to pull those vocals off, just the three of us at the same time, it was like nerve wracking, but it turned out great. I mean, uh, you know, it's, to have known the songs no longer than we did, I think it's amazing. So uh, we had a, a great time <laughs> filming that too, man. It was a lot of fun and we'd, you know, we'd be going freaking doing really good right up to the end of the song and somebody messes up totally. You know, I'm like, oh, <laughs> we're gonna start over and do it again. So we, I mean, it took a long time to get one take where everybody pretty much didn't screw up so bad that we had to stop, right? Because it was all live. There's nothing. There's nothing on there that we didn't play right then. So, well, and I like that, Perry. That that whole idea. Um, I think from a fan point of view, to to be able to get that both video and audio whenever they do come out, those are going to be good, good uh, keepsakes for uh, the fans. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be good. I and. I mean, even the songs when we recorded The Hell with the Devil, we thought that was going to be a piece of cake because we were like, we play these songs a thousand times, you know. We had more trouble with that than we did with the other record. It was like, man, what's going on? But, uh, you know, it's, it's, I, think, I think you're going to like it. It's turned out really good, though. Yeah. I'm hoping, Mr. Perry, that, uh, you know, Part of the charm sometimes, and, and it's understood, this is a live as you're going recording. I think sometimes part of the charm is maybe the mistakes. You know, maybe yeah. I'm hoping that, I mean, I, you know, I don't know what, what you all would choose to do. And of course, it's good to have that official tape. But boy, it sure would be neat to have the outtakes too. On yeah, You know, I, I think it'd be awesome. That would be fun. They might, oh, hey, they might throw a lot of that in there. I don't know how they're going to. Kind of like the end of the Divider video where you guys are just kind of, you know, that's so cool just to see you guys, you know, like out of, you know, whatever. And just like, you're just real people too, just horsing around, you know? Yeah. yeah I mean, they might put some of that stuff in there because there was some fun. <laughs> There's a lot of funny things going on. So we'll see. And I'm really hoping in, in, you know, this could, this could play out well for Striker. There are people like me that I am certainly going to invest in every official Striker release. So my, my point being, yes, I'm excited about the video, but I also hope to have that either on vinyl or CD. I mean, and I think Michael said it would be coming out in hard copy like that too. But, Thank you know... You, and as I understand it, each of the albums, you know, at different junctures through, as Striper continues to progress, I mean, um, I'm super stoked to hear, uh, I am super stoked to hear maybe a live in the studio recording of God Damn Evil, because we will get to hear you on that. You know, you were represented on that album, but I want the official Perry Richardson version. 
Yeah, I wish I could have gotten to play on that. Um, but uh, yeah, I was right. They were already, I think they had already recorded those bass tracks when I got hired. So, right. and I still had to give, I was playing with Craig Morgan at the time and I, sure. I had to give him a few more weeks before I just quit him, you know. <laughs> um, but I really, I would have loved to play it on that. But that guy did a freaking great job. I mean, that was a hard one to copy. So he, it sounds good, man. I think I, I, you know, I'll put my two cents in on it. If we ever do that one live, I mean, Michael, I think he's wanting to do it like every record like that. He's told yeah. me, yeah, we should record every record. I was like, well, as long as, oh boy, then I, the, you know what? The first thing that flashed into my mind was having to learn Shining Star. Like, maybe you can get Randy Jackson back in. He can sit in and play on that one. <laughs> Oh, you can do it, buddy. Take me a month to learn that one song. I'm like, no. <laughs> that was a killer album, a uh, yeah, killer yeah. song. So kind of kind of centering, staying one more second on, on the, the previous album. And I just have to ask, and, and there are fans such as myself and Rex, we understood the title. We got it. We, we, we know what's going on there. But just out of curiosity, because and it's understood, Perry, that you did the right thing. You wanted to help your buddy Craig out and kind of give your two weeks notice. And we, we all know what was happening in the Striper camp during that time and the way things needed to work. But when you first heard the title, and this question is to you, Miss Shelley, as well as you, Perry, uh, again, there are those of us who completely get it and understand. Did you, when you first heard the title, were you like, uh, oh, okay, or, or did you have to kind of go say what? <laughs> thing I said is where's the comma? <laughs> where does what? Oh the comma? Where's the comma? You left out the comma. <laughs> We're not gonna get it. <laughs> so uh, um yeah I was like wow you really you want that you want to do that? And uh, I didn't know the guys at the time. I was like well you're definitely pushing the envelope. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like pushing the envelope man I've always been I had, you know, I'm normally not the one to uh, be the normal kid in the room. <laughs> <No. laughs> so I loved it. I thought it was very cool. And, you you know, you might offend some people, but it also makes people think, I think, you know, a lot more. If, you know, you got to, you know, I, I can see both sides of that, but you're trying to make a statement. And sometimes it takes being a little brash to make a statement, you know? Sure. And it's it's three separate words, and I understood. And, you know, I think the word damn throws people off, but, you know, it's from the King James, and, and it means to condemn or judge. I get it. I'm, I had yeah. no problems with it. Miss yeah. Shelley, what was your take on it when you first heard that title? <laughs> I mean, kind of just what he said. I mean, I this was – you know, he was new, and I'm thinking, okay, you know, how this goes, you know, and I, I mean, I was fine with it, I mean, I, I like you said, I, I can see both sides of it, but, I mean, I was like, okay, let's, let's go, let's see what happens. Yeah, right. <laughs> so. it, it's kind of speaking the language, and I think you kind of alluded to this, Mr. Perry, 
Striper being a metal band that you guys are. I mean, it's it's speaking that language to to the crowd, uh, yeah. the, the lingo that they speak, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. Sure. got a question for you um kind of off that subject but um what artist or musician living or dead um would you like to play with if you could pick someone either living or dead that maybe you haven't played with or i know i'm kind of putting you on the spot there maybe but i'm just curious is there anyone that you'd really like man i wish i could have played with them or uh, well um uh... It probably have to be Judas Priest, man. They, they were my all-time favorite, and uh, to be on stage with Rob Halford, that would just be a dream come true. So, um, yeah, that's the first thing I guess that would pop okay. up. Okay. Uh, yeah. Cool. Well, I see that we're we're nearing that golden hour, and you all, I, I hate to cut it, but. You know, I want to be, we want to be respectful. Um, oh, you guys are great. <laughs> so, Barry and Shelly, I just want to, you know, just want to say that your all's countenance, it exudes joy. I mean, Perry, you're always up there smiling on stage, and, and Miss Shelly, you do the same. And I think Rex and I, on behalf of so many Striper fans, I mean, sincerely, you all are loved and appreciated. And we also see where your joy I mean, we don't know as fans what's going on behind the scenes, but like Rex said earlier, just seeing footage of, of Perry, you and you and Robert and Oz and Michael cutting up in the studio mm -hmm. um, and the good times and stuff. I mean, you all have both brought a vibrance and a joy back to this band and it's noticeable. And I think that's something that underlying has helped to propel this album. Um, with the vibe that's going on with it. We hope you both know how loved and appreciated you all are in the Striper family, and we look up to you and we want to thank you. Oh, thank you. That's, that's so awesome. Sweet. Yeah. I mean, from a fan's perspective, you can definitely see it. You know, I, I, I asked that question at that one listening party, and I know all the band uh, said, yeah, that you can definitely see a, a really big unity feeling and just family and it you can just it just you know it just you guys shine you can just see the love and just everything with the band I mean it's so awesome to see that from a fan's perspective too that your band is like really one you know it's just awesome well good man I mean I, yeah I get asked all the time why are you smiling so much on this page like I didn't used to <laughs> It's because I'm so happy now. I mean, we're having a great time. And I, I can't hide that. It's like, you're supposed to be looking like real mean when you're playing this heavy <laughs> song. But I was like, hey, you know, so <laughs> I'm at it. So I can't hide that. And just, I've become on stage just to kind of let my personality out. I don't try to be something up there that I'm not. You know, I don't try to be the tough rock star guy. I'm just me, and that's what I am on stage now. And it's just uh, whatever comes out, that's, that's coming from my heart, you know. So that's that's all I can say about that. Well, it's contagious, so thank you. The smiles, everybody else is smiling back at you. So. <laughs> good, good. 
if y'all don't mind, we just typically, we like to close out every Striper Dive episode just kind of reading a bit of scripture real quick. And uh, in going through our homework and, and hearing you all talk about it, uh, everything that goes on within the Striper camp, Striper's been busy and has a lot in the works. It just reminded me of Colossians 3, 23 and 24. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. So just want to say to you both, thank you for what you do and for whom you serve. And we've been blessed by it as fans. We thank you. Yes, thank you. Well, thank you guys. Thank it's you been so awesome. much. Awesome. And yep. thank you for doing such great research, too. You guys both You're very such good. A, yeah, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> we, <just run. laughs> we hope you'll consider joining us again sometime. Yes. Absolutely. Anytime. anytime yep. Absolutely. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Thank, thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. friends really quick we're back some behind the scenes and miss shelly and mr perry they have their their french and their english bulldogs miss shelly you want to introduce them this is lily may hey, and she's lily may. 13 and this is augie and she's we rescued her about almost two months ago and she's about six or seven english mm. bulldog yeah awesome. we love them bullies <laughs> that's our thing wonderful dogs <laughs> <laughs>